ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another edition of AWP Anything Wrestling Podcast. We are back here again, another quarantine edition. Uh, it is myself, Dan the Man, and the Kamish. How are you guys doing? Great. I'm having a wonderful time being in quarantine, said nobody ever. <laughs> I'm over here with my orange juice to keep me healthy. And I am irritated. Um... What is tonight's topic? Are we talking about uh, Nikki and Brie Bella both being pregnant? Are we talking about the Big Show show? Are we talking about whether or not John Cena is actually retired? No, Dan, we're not talking about uh, Rhea Ripley being buried by someone who doesn't deserve it. We're actually talking about something else today. Do you mean somebody else burying everybody? Yes. Uh, No, 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 no. We're not talking about John Cena either. Um... Actually, we are here to discuss a topic that is actually very current because uh, there was a certain someone who we would talk about roughly about a year and a half ago and then kind of kind of got distant from the topic. But once again, there's been some ruckus and I thought that what better way to cover it than to have all three of us recording again. Um, we are here today to talk about former WWE superstar, former UFC superstar, or what, what do they call themselves over there? They don't Fighter. call themselves superstars. UFC fighters? But, yeah. Former, they're just... former, former total diva star. Mm. <laughs> former 911. Nine, is that the she broke her finger on? 911? Yeah. Former 911 guest star. Well, I can't really put my finger on it, but... Um, <laughs> Neither can she. Hey, do you get it? Um, this is so bad. Um, it's because her, fi- her finger was off. Oh, oh. God. That's not so the only thing that put, was off. She can't um, put her finger on the pulse of, of pop culture. We get it. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not talking about CM Punk either. Um, okay, let's... Let's just get to it. What are we talking about, Shots? Well, um, little old Ronda Rousey made a few comments recently on a podcast interview. Um, I have everything here, and I'm going to quote it directly so that we don't misquote anything. Hate to be Michael Cole for a few minutes, but, and I quote, uh, she was asked about, you know, her time in the WWE and, you know, was asked about, you know, the girls in the locker room and all this and that. And then finally, it came down to asking her about the quote-unquote, ungrateful wrestling fans. What am I doing it for? I'm not being able to spend my time and energy on my family, but instead spending it, my time and, and my energy on a bunch of effing ungrateful fans that don't even appreciate me. I love performing, I love the girls, I love being out there, but at the end of the day, I was just like, F these fans, dude. My family loves me, and they appreciate me, and all my energy to go into them. But after all this was said, naturally, much like us, this sparked a lot of fire under the WWE universe. And so I think about a day later, she uh, wrote, and I quote, Anyone who is outraged by me calling pro wrestling fake fights for fans has never been in a real fight. While you all are tiptoeing around bruising some pro wrestlers, huge soft egos, no one is thinking about all the real fighters you're insulting when pretending pro wrestling is somehow on the same level of realism. Yes, I understand. Wrestling 300 days a year for years on end is incredibly tough on the body and a difficult profession. But do you know what would happen if you got in 300 real fights in a year? That would be, or sorry, you would be dead. Now, these were her follow-up comments, and then naturally this sparked uh, even more outrage, not only by the WWE Universe, but by some of the pro wrestlers in the back. Nia Jax had to say, and I quote, I can't wait for Ronda to one day return to WWE. Even if WWE orders me to make Ronda look good in the ring, which is the only way for Ronda to look good in the ring uh, with me, I'll, I'll risk my job to go down in history as the one from this biz that knocked her the F out. Lexi, my Lexi, that being Alexa Bliss, had to say, and I quote, Hmm, I was out for almost a year. Must have been quote-unquote fake. And very, very lastly, uh, we have Lana 
saying, and I quote, I have no words for her audacity to sit to save fake fighting. If if it is fake, why can't at real page and TJ Wilson can't wrestle anymore? If it is fake, why couldn't Edge wrestle for eleven years? This is a contact sport where real things happen. So, guys, I personally want to get your opinion on this. And I don't want you to feel like you have to agree with me or, you, you know, I have to hear my words out of your mouth. I honestly want to know, what do you guys put together from all of this? What do you guys think? Well, first of all, I mean, Lana's, Lana's response was difficult to read. So she should probably work on her... Uh her grammar, but that's not the point. That's not what we're here for. Uh, uh, Kamish, if you want to open the floor, go for it. I personally thought, like, I, I think I, I, I first have to take fault into, I know Deshaun would have run into it, but I kind of sent it his way first because it struck a nerve to me the first thing she said. Then, Reading what she said today in response to her own words, I was just like, dude, like, where, where do you get off? Like, coming out saying these things, and it's like, you're already a joke in MMA. You're already, like, seen as, like, this. <sighs> there, there's a word for it. Ah, I, I wish I had the word, but, like, it's like, no one respect. You lost respect in one sport. Now you're you've been given an opportunity. You've been given the moon and a half, practically, in another sport. And there's people trying to defend it. Oh, it's just a plug. You know, she's just trying to get under your skin to do a promo. It's like this doesn't sound like a promo, you idiots. It sounds like somebody who's bitter. Yeah, and it's like okay. I thought about what she said. Three hundred fights in a year. Hmm. MMA fighters didn't even fight for 300 days in a year. They give two fights a year. Thank you. That's, mm-hmm. and, and, and that's their top stars. If you're someone who's like a mid-carder or like um, like a debut star in MMA, you have to fight four or five times out of the year. That's more than enough like fits the cuffs that you have to go through. And it's like... I'm sure in four or five fights in a year, you you probably die as opposed to 300 like her stupid number was. And that's what that's what irritated me about all of this is just like, where do you get off like being so frustrated because, oh, you don't get time with family like you knew what you're getting into. If you said originally it was your dream to work for the WWE, then you should know what comes of the consequences. I mean, yeah. yeah. Oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say it's like she came in and she she expected to expected to be welcomed like a hero, and when she didn't get to play play superhero Ronda Rousey and have everybody go, oh my god, she's so good. I'm so happy Ronda's here. Um, especially right as you have Becky Lynch coming up the ladder. Of course, we went with our own before we went with Ronda. Um. But for her to be so bent out of shape for somebody who who seems to get a decent amount of acting gigs as well, you'd think that she'd understand the idea behind storytelling. The the, the fans didn't like her by cer- due to circumstance, which I, I get. But she doesn't get to be mad about that because there were more things in play. And I, don't get me wrong, I'm sure some, there were some fans that were regularly talking the way that we talked about it previously on the podcast um and i'm sure that they were reaching out to her and could, spamming her social media with with vulgarities and things so uh, I, sorry sean i'm gonna throw this this will be my one fuck no. those people but um the fact of the matter for me is this is still not a justifiable attitude the majority of the fans i don't think have like a vendetta against her but she's acting like we all do She's full of herself. She doesn't get to talk about people's soft, soft, giant egos. And to me, it's just upsetting because it's like, all right. And I'm sure, like, all of us grew up, like, when we were kids, like, being told, oh, you know, wrestling's fake, it's scripted, blah, blah, like, whatever. Everyone's grown up with that. I get it. And 
I, and along with all wrestling fans know, wrestling is scripted to the point of the outcomes and the stories and all that. The only but, thing, but they still have to go out there and do the stuff. Yes, that's and that's what my point is. It's like it's the, there's no reason these guys and these women go to the gym. They, it's not like they're not working out and keeping, you know, fit lifestyles to just have show muscle. No, wrestling is still a contact sport. Other, really otherwise, that, anybody could do it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's what, like, just pisses me, like, the hell off about Ronda. It's like, you have the nerve to say that, but yet it's like, okay, you fought maybe once, twice a year in your MMA career, and the minute you get your ass kicked twice, two times, you cry foul both times and you run away. What is, and what, what is her actual UFC record? How many fights did she actually have? 14 in total. Her record is 12 and 2. And it's like, okay, well, uh, Triple H and Shawn Michaels, Bret Hart, uh, you can name like a thousand superstars and say have had a number of matches where it's just like, hmm. I think if they only wrestled 14 times in the span of their careers, I don't think they would really be saying half the shit they're saying. This is, ugh, God. I, Sean, please say something because, like, the more I think about this, it's like I start getting annoyed. Let, let me chime in real quick with the time frame. Yeah, sure, go started ahead. started in March 2011. So she was only oh in God. UFC for five years. Oh, my God. And and to, like you said, uh, her first year, she had she had four fights between March and November. So that's the longest. Okay, four. So that's the longest stretch of time where she was, like, going. <laughs> and then okay. she had two a year up until uh, 2015. God. So the fact that she like I mean for God's sake you've got people like the Undertaker who are no no offense they're old and they're still doing doing things like jumping over the top rope and landing on their backs um, to to downplay that by considering that sort of thing a fake fight is is, is dickish bad shot um. Honestly, the one thing that just kind of kept on going through my mind is the treatment that she received instantaneously when she walked in through the door. Um, instantaneous WrestleMania spot, um, instantaneous title, you know, run. Uh, and it's like, I think what Nia Jack said, even though I know specifically you, Dan, not you don't agree with everything that Nia Jax, Nia Jax has done or said, but I think yeah. we can all agree that, you know, what she said is basically the bulk of what we're talking about now. The fact that all these female wrestlers right before going out were told, hey, just make sure that you make her look good. Um, how yeah, more... wasn't, and, and wasn't Alexa, Alexa got hurt by her. Oh, did she? I'm pretty sure that's the point of her post because she she was on the shelf for a year. I think it was because of her match with Ronda. If I'm not if I'm not mistaken, yeah, that, that's right. Ronda was that, the one that caused her to be on the shelf for a year. Yeah, there was a video attached, um, but because I was looking at a at a post that had taken a picture of the original post, uh, I wasn't able to play the video, but. Right. Um, I, I kind of stand by what I said, like when you have people like, and I know, sorry, commission, this might strike another nerve. When you have the riot squad who, whether it was independently or as a tag team would get taken out by her in less than two minutes. It's like you sort of bury all this talent. You get the red carpet treatment. You're, you know, front and center of everything. And yet, that's not good enough. You still find a reason to complain because the fans didn't give you that reaction that you were looking for. Um, yeah, it's just... I, I forget who wrote it, but when they said, you know, the audacity. Like, literally, it takes audacity to insult a sport where you're given so much. And especially, that was Lana. Yeah, yeah, that was Lana. And, uh, Dan, you 
actually responded by, because uh, I know that when WrestleMania 35 first happened, as weird as it sounded, I made a, um, a comparison to the Montreal screw job. Um, and Triple H's words were kind of echoing through my mind in the sense of when he said, if Brett won't do business, we'll do business for him. Now, you kind of take that and you apply it to WrestleMania 35, where if Ronda doesn't want to do business, we'll do business for her. I believe you said something about like believing it a little more in that idea now that maybe what they did with her towards the end of that match was almost the WrestleMania 35 screw job, if you will. Yeah, I affectionately called it, uh, referred to it as her being screw jobbed. And what, where, what I was getting at with that is that maybe she, because what we'd heard was that she didn't want to tap to Becky. Yeah. She, she felt like that would make her look weak. Um, but, you know, we've seen that time and time again. That's your feel-good moment of WrestleMania. Yeah. And so maybe maybe they caved and they were like, okay, well, here's the deal, Ronda. You go out there, you win. We'll give you your big hero moment. We'll have you. We'll have Becky uh, get you with a roll up next next week or something, and gave her like the the, the, the lip service, and then they told Becky uh, just hold her shoulders. <laughs> like I, I I don't necessarily take Becky for a person like that, but maybe she maybe she was just as irritated as the three women we've talked about so far. Yeah, you know, I think Becky has, was very vocal um, in those um, interviews leading up to WrestleMania where she said how Ronda was always complaining about how hectic the scheduling was and how, you know, tough everything is. And it's like, well, okay, you want the red carpet treatment, you want the championships, you want the WrestleMania spotlight, but yet you want to pull a Brock Lesnar where you don't want to be traveling all the time. You don't want it to be hectic. And that's exactly where I always go back to, hey, it's not UFC, it's WWE, you know? Yeah, cause that, and then she has the audacity to shit on the people who do uh, do the, who do do the, that work schedule. And it's, it's, it's not, it's not cool. And also, uh, yes, uh, Alexa got dropped on her head during the Piper spit. Oh, okay. I so, mean, uh, yeah, come here, go ahead. Uh, so this is, a couple things I wanted to uh, throw in about all this. One, it's like you're expecting to come into the WWE thinking, oh, you're going to get the Brock Lesnar treatment. You can do your appearances a couple times. You'll get paid for them. You'll wrestle your matches, and that's it. It's like, no, you signed up for this, so you have to work with us. You work for us now. And it's like, you're not willing to play ball, so you're going to start this whole campaign of, oh, this stuff is fake, this stuff is crap, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, okay, well, now you see why you got screwed at WrestleMania. One. Two, I- I'm kind of looking over her record and, like, the beginning of her career. Like, she had two, three months of separated time for her fights in, like, 2011. And then from 2012 to, like, 16 she would get like six to seven months off because she was a champion at this point. Right. So to me, it's like, okay, well, I get it. You have to train, you have to take care of your body, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But wrestlers don't get that. They perform not only for the shows that we watch, but they perform for the shows that are live to audiences of, well, not right now, but around the world. Constantly. So for you to say we, you're saying that it's all fake, it's like, are you fucking kidding me? And, and that's going to be my one. <laughs> and then the other thing, it's like, okay, I kind of read this thing where, you know how we're kind of upset how Becky has won both WrestleMania moments like within these last two years? Like it's a controversial pinfall? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, there's someone tried to defend it that this was Becky's way of insulting like Ronda and Shayna because they're they're MMA cage fighters originally, and to this in in a way Becky was disgracing them by pinning them in such a weird and unprecedented way that it's like it's a slap to the face to them because it's like you're gonna treat 
the WWE like this, well, we're going to treat you like this. Which I don't think is fair to, to Shayna. I, I mean, yeah. Shayna, Shayna shows up and she she works. And but so, the, and that's my I, thing. I don't like, think Shayna. Can... I think for Shayna they're doing it as a storyline. For Ronda, it's like okay, well, she's not going to play ball. We'll make her play ball. Uh, yeah, I just I I still think that even from a storyline standpoint, it, it's still it it makes her look bad for no reason. I would think so too, and but the only thing that kind of bugs right now about all this, is, it's just that I don't understand if you're not in it right now, like you're still on what? What is she on? Like a, a furlough, a vacation, or some shit? I guess. Yeah. Then why are you even talking about it? Because you're asked about it, and it's like. You can't avoid the question. You can't do what you've constantly done throughout your freaking career where it's like, oh, I don't want to answer that or just walk away. If she's notorious for having bad interviews or saying the wrong things at the wrong time. And this is the one time she decides to open her mouth like an idiot. And the funny thing is, like, I had a conversation with my girlfriend about all this. The first thing out of my girlfriend's mouth is like, if she's that bitter, why is she still there? Why hasn't Stephanie fired her? Yeah. Now, on the flip, on the flip side, what I'll what I'll say, and I I I think that it's a bad business decision, at least to approach it this way. Maybe she's queuing up to return. I know, leading up to WrestleMania, we talked about the prospect of Ronda making her return right around this time. But like, if the goal here is to now build her up to be the super heel, uh, to then come back and then we we hate her the whole time. I get that. But this is the way they're they're going about this. They, these specific interviews are may, are put, leaving a sour taste in people's mouths where we don't really want to see her back. Like even if she's gonna come back, she's not gonna get her ass kicked immediately. So <laughs> It's going to be she comes in, she buries some people, and then maybe somebody gets gets the big moment at the end, just like with Becky. But she'll still probably piss and moan, and we'll have a shoddy ending just like we did the first time. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not excited after hearing these comments about the idea of Rhonda comes back and we get to see our girls fight her. No, I'd rather she stay away at this point. Yeah. I don't she might come back. You know... I, I I guess I agree with you, Dan, exactly, um, especially everything that's been said. I'm not exactly looking forward to it, um, you know, and the, the, the funny thing is, you know, as an athlete, as a public figure, there is such a thing as professionalism. Um, you know, you can YouTube it right now and you can YouTube, you know, awkward interviews with celebrities or, you know, um, uncomfortable interview moments. And you will see that sometimes the celebrity kind of takes control and goes, um, I'd rather not, can we just move on, you know? And even though, like, there's that part of the human anatomy that goes, oh, what are you trying to hide, huh? What is it that you don't want to talk about? There's also a part of me that's like, you know what, props. Like, that's professionalism, you know, if it's kind of goes back to that old expression, if you don't have anything good to say, don't say anything at all. Um, and I got to be honest, like, it kind of put something in a perspective for me. You know, all this time we've talked about the John Cena's of the world and the Roman Reigns's of the world. And I got to be honest with you, like, it takes a lot for you to get booed out of the building for years and to still be like, you know what, everybody's entitled to their own opinion, it is what it is, and to not let it get to you. Like, Roman and Cena are two people whom I can say, yeah, you know what, in an ideal world, I'm pretty sure they would love if everybody cheered them, but everybody doesn't, and it seems like they're okay with it. They're not bitter about it, they're not pissed off about it, at this point they're like, you know what, it is what it is. It's my job. Yeah. <laughs> but it seems like with her, like you can even again YouTube it, Ronda Rousey awkward interviews. The second someone decides to criticize a small thing in her game plan, if you want to be someone who years from now 
you have little girls going, yeah, you know, I, I want to be like Ronda Rousey. You got to be you got to be someone who's willing to take and give criticism. You know, it's not a perfect it's not a perfect world. There's no such thing as the perfect WWE superstar. Everybody has flaws. I don't care if you're a Steve Austin, a Shawn Michaels, a Rock or whoever. Like those guys have made mistakes. Those guys do things that I'm sure that they regret all the time and we talk we've talked about it here on the podcast. But every single one of them, it's like maybe not before, but they eventually come to a point where they're like, "You know what? Yeah, I was wrong." Like they humble themselves and I hate to jump into risky territory, but when you have someone who was borderline contemplating taking their own life, it's like you would think that they would humble themselves. You know, I mean, I don't know. What What do you guys think? I, no, I agree. Like this is this is the the girl who she's attacking people's egos, the, the delicateness of their egos, except for the fact that she lost two fights. And that destroyed her world. Well, you, you, I'm just saying, you, you'd think she'd have more compassion for those for, for people then. I don't know how much of a destructive world she was in at her final loss, but to have a comfortable $3 million cushion to fall on, I don't know. Should you really feel that destroyed? It's... <laughs> Well, again, uh, money is one thing, but when you get built up as, oh, no one can defeat you, oh, no one can stop her, you know, there is such a thing, and you see it all the time in documentaries where the the thing that you that you get described as, the hype that you put out, you get sucked into. A lot of times, you know, we hear it where a lot of people say, you know what, so-and-so had a great gimmick. But eventually, they started living their gimmick. It got to their heads. They weren't able to control it, you know? And I think that not that in UFC, you, you have a gimmick that you're slapped with, but I think so many times of possibly Dana White and all these other people going, oh, you're unbeatable. No, you're going to be undefeated. You're, you're great. Just go out there and just, just, just kick that person's ass. The first time when that doesn't become the scenario, it's like, huh, what, what the hell happened here? You know, she, I think, was never taught to lose, to accept she that. She was never taught to be humble either. Yeah, I, I mean, that's my point, is that there comes to a point where you go, you know what, I have the success, I have all this and that, but you, you got to stay humble because if you don't, it gets to you, it screws with you, and eventually it leads to, well, what we just talked about, people contemplating their lives feeling like they're not who they used to be or feeling like half of who they used to be, you know, questioning their morals, questioning, you know, who they are and where they are in the universe. You know, it's, it's, it's a very dark path to go down. And I feel like that's, that's essentially what's happened with her is that she needs to win. That that's, that's her philosophy. I can't lose. I'm incapable of losing and I will not do business that way. And it's like, yeah, but this is not, it's not UFC, you know, it's, it, you're, you're, it's sports entertainment. Exactly, you know, and I don't know. I Today I thought of, you know, the analogy where it says, you know, you bite the hand that feeds you. I truly believe that WWE fed Ronda Rousey very well. And then the one moment where they asked her, hey, can you do the favors at WrestleMania 35? She decided to bite the hand that had been feeding her for a year at that point, which... Honestly, is not fair because you have people like Steve Austin who are the biggest hit in the company. In his last match, he goes, yeah, I'm going to lay down for The Rock. You have people like Undertaker who have a 21-0 streak and they go, you know what? I want to give back. I'll give Brock my streak. You have so many people, people like Shawn Michaels, who has been told you're the greatest performer. He loses at Mania in his final match. Ric Flair, who lost to Shawn Michaels. You know, it's been said, you know, that in the business, you always want to give back. The business that has given to you, you always want to give back. But it seems like Ronda Rousey didn't get that memo. Why? Because, oh, I was a success in UFC, so I'm entitled, right? I just need, like, whatever comes my way, I'm going to take. It's just... I just... It's no, not fair. I'm, so, I'm sorry to interrupt. Go ahead, go ahead, just, go ahead. What, what bugs me about it, it's like, I, I agree with that. Like, you, you were given the world for an entire year 
and you and you all you had to do was just one simple thing. And I'm sure they would have been okay with like, all right, you did this for us. If you want time with your family, we'll we'll pay it back to you. You know, if you want um, time to like, um, you know, get your career together, whatever you want to do, go ahead, sure. All you had to do was one favor. But it just sucks that it's just like, why can't you do this one thing? Like, I'm sure Dana White asked her at least all, you know, don't kill my other competitors. But then again, half her matches, or if not all her matches, were like less than a minute. Yes. In the UFC standards. She, she's a, a, a talented fighter. I, I, like, I'm not going to take anything away from her, but that doesn't give her the right to be a dick. <laughs> Thank you. Exactly. And, that, and that's what sucks. It's like, you're, you're being this, like, dick. <laughs> like, why? Yeah, and that was your cue. Why? 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 Are you a dick? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I I don't know. Like, it just, it's one of those things where it doesn't make sense to me, you know. It's, you hear it all the time, you know, and they tell you it's not for everybody. This sport, if you will, if we can call it that, wrestling, WWE. That's this, a little sport. No, you can call it that. Um, well, I mean, you know, Ronda thinks differently, but, you know, I, I've, you know, I would give, speech papers about this in front of a, a classroom stating that no this is a sport because these guys they train they're on the road they bust it's their... physically intensive it's physically uh painful yeah but again it seems like the preconceived notion is oh but they land on a cushion it's good it's all good and it's like no bro like it's not that soft <laughs> like we've seen gargano and champa expose the ring that's not a gimmick. That's literally what it is. It's all those planks, or not planks, it's those wooden planks uh, cushioned, you know. It's it's like, what is it, like a three-inch cushion? And that's it. Something like that. And yeah, that's I it. Mean, if, if, if you've seen the Performance Center rings, they have so much more plush to them than these rings do. Yeah. And that's because those are for training. <laughs> And then you get to the to the big dance, and you're gonna hurt. <laughs> you yeah. hear the stories of the first time I took a bump; it ripped the air out of my lungs. So let, let it ease up. Let's ease up on the fake talk. Yeah, and and imagine like you're doing this like she said, three hundred nights out of out of the year. That's it's why like, people develop painkiller addictions. <laughs> and I think that's what's what's kind of pissing me off the most is you know this whole it thing it destroys people's lives yeah and it, but it seems like to her she takes that lightly like no no this is this is fake like anybody could do this ah, 300 fake fights a year why not and it's like you don't I'm, I'm running out of words honestly like words are failing me because I'm just it's like I'm trying to contain myself but it's it just there is obviously a understanding gap in her mind when it comes to wrestling. And I know I've never been in a wrestling ring. I've never, you know, wrestled for the WWE, but I have been an advocate of telling everyone that F word that everybody wants to throw around that it's fake. Yeah. Let's, let's see you take a bump and then we'll talk. Well, I mean, okay. Uh, I mean, none of us have actually been in an actual wrestling ring, but we've all, like with our friends in our lifetime when we were younger, like, oh yeah, you know, let's let's wrestle, you know, let let's do WWE stuff, and, you know, let's do like Sweet Chin Music or Stones Cold Stunners or Rock Bottoms, and we do it like on bed mattresses, like yeah, on, on baseball fields or whatever, like wherever we can, and even t like just trying to emulate it, that shit would hurt. Yes, absolutely. Let, let, let me chime in with this. From the the woman who thinks that uh, three hundred nights of fake fights is uh, is 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 fluff, because according to profightdb.com, she has a total of thirty three WWE matches. Oh Jesus! Are you serious? That's what it says. It says thirty three matches, eleven pay per views. 
So, so she only had 33 fights in WWE, and she wants to make light of the 300-day-a-year. Honey, you couldn't even make it to 50 matches. Yeah, not even half of half of what you're talking about. It's like a third of, like... Not, well, yeah, it's almost like a third of her... Or a half of her MMA career. What the hell? But I will say this. And this is, the, this is the one part where it kind of has a happy ending for me. Major, major props to all the WWE female wrestlers who stood up and wouldn't take that crap because I can almost feel like Vince or someone in the back would be like, oh, no, 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 do not respond. No, we don't want to leave a bad taste in her mouth just in case she ever wants to come back. And I feel like that has always been the problem, is cushioning everything about her. Literally at one point, guys, her gimmick was to crap all over the sport. And you want to talk about people not appreciating you, people not liking you? I mean, really, like, it, that doesn't compute in my mind. I just, I don't understand it. But props to Lana, props to Alexa, props to Naya. For, and, like, Naya stood out to me because I can only imagine in every single match they were told, hey, just make her look good. It'll be fine. And it's like, you have everyone literally bent over backwards, helping you, helping you rise. When they themselves do not get half of the opportunities that you do, it's. <laughs> I'm going to chime in one more time with some match totals from other people. Yeah. Becky Lynch, 525 matches. Jesus. Alexa Bliss, 395 matches. All right. Nia Jax, 310 matches. Jesus. So they all have done more than 10 times the number of WWE matches that Ronda's had. And I mean, year. when you combine half uh, that, of. That, that's that I think is their their career total, but it's still that's they have that much more experience, and then she's got her her what was it eleven fights, twelve fights, Four, fourteen, fourteen real fights. Ugh. Here's my thing: like you have, like okay, what was it? Uh, because I've been watching a lot of documentaries. Like, I, I've been watching a lot of documentaries about, like, all the WrestleMania lately. What was it? Uh, Bliss, Charlotte, and Sasha. Like, they had to pay their dues before they, like, stepped out of the Performance Center to NXT. And before they stepped out from that to the main roster. So you can imagine all that stuff they had to do on top of what they're currently doing, where it's Ronda Rousey, it's like, no, oh, no, you don't. Yeah, you can train for like a couple months, and, and we'll, we'll push you. We'll push you immediately. And you give her the storyline later on, like, all right, you're going to throw it in Becky's face that a year ago you were the talk of WrestleMania the year before, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, well, you're only given that because of your name. Because of who you were in MMA. Correct. And even then, if you weren't that, I don't think you would be given the red carpet treatment if you were never successful in UFC. Like, I'm sure if like she had a decent record and she transitioned over, she would be given the Shayna treatment. All right, well, you got to prove it. Work your ass off in the Performance Center. Work your ass off for almost a couple years in NXT. And then you'll be on the main roster. But no, she shits all over it because, oh, you're Ronda Rousey. You need to be on the main roster immediately. And and to me, it's just like, come on. Like, there's the other girls who have had to pay their dues. And they're grateful for it. I mean... I know I shat on uh, Sasha for taking, like, what, six months off? Yeah. But still, like, I'm sure everything she's done before, like, her time off and then her comeback last year, she's put her body through health. And I give her props for that. You know, like, all these girls have done so much, and, and, and to me, it, it just sucks Sasha. because... 
Sasha, 593 matches. Jesus. She, like, that's, that, she's, she's seven away from 600. That's that's double of what little Miss Rhonda was talking about. Like, imagine if, if Sasha Banks was in 600 fights. Like, come on now. She'd be a tough broad. <laughs> I mean... And, uh, Kamish, to go back to your point for just one second, you know, God bless Triple H, but I felt like even in interviews, he was trying to cushion the whole thing by saying, hey, you know, Ronda Rousey, man, she came into the Performance Center, there were literally moments where I had to tell her, that's it, I'm pulling the plug, enough training for today, and she insisted on continuing. Uh, yeah, Triple H, but a month, two months, three months at the Performance Center, sporadically... While you have other people who, for months, years at a time, like you said, Kamish, go to the Performance Center, then they go to NXT, they try to prove themselves, go to the main roster, doesn't work out, go back to NXT, trying to have a resurgence, and all the while, someone steps in through the door, a former UFC star who, uh, ding ding, stole her gimmick from a previous wrestler, and comes in, and still gets the red carpet treatment. And, you know, everyone's saying that, oh, she was ready. Oh, you should have seen her. She was ready. Is that why her, we, I couldn't even understand a damn thing she was saying during, during her promos? Is that why there was botch after botch in her matches? Is that, is that why she wouldn't stop talking when she would go to apply a move such as, uh, what was it? Tables are for bitches. You guys think I can't wrestle? I'm going to prove it to you that I can wrestle. I mean, because if, if she had pulled off a Kurt Angle or even a Alexa Bliss, because Alexa Bliss was another example of someone who just picked up the business immediately, I would have been like, okay, you know what, let's go for it. But the results that we got is not what I would have expected if, you know, for someone of Ronda Rousey's stature or demeanor. It's funny, you, you brought up Kurt Angle, and, and I always think of it like, you know, Kurt Angle could have come in as soon as like they first first introduced him. And, you know, he could have done what Ronda did, but he didn't. Like, Kurt Angle literally was introduced, and then he was taken out because he went to training. He went to learn the business. He went to learn what the WWE was supposed to be. And then he comes back, and the guy took off like he get, like he was asked to do things and he would do them and he would do them like 10 times over what he was asked to do. It's like, oh, yeah, you know, make an ass out of yourself. He literally made an ass out of himself in like a promo or a bit with like whether it was with Stone Cold or with The Rock or with whoever they put him with. But he's a paid dude. He still put in work. It's just like, oh, uh, you're on the route. Yeah, we, you know, we think you're ready. Do you want to pay dues? No? Okay, that, that's fine. You're on the Rousey. It's like, come on, really? Uh, but, yeah, yeah, that's in, that's entitlement at its, at its finest. Uh-huh. Yeah, I mean, again, you know, it's it just, uh, she literally just spat on everything and everyone that literally helped her throughout, you know, that year. But, um, again, props to the rest of the roster for standing up for what they believe in. Um, and not to say that, you know, those girls aren't tough. I don't care if you are a successful UFC fighter. I guarantee you those female wrestlers who you claim put on 300 fake fights a year, they, I'm pretty sure someone in that roster can take you on. But do you think, like, there, there's the speculation that, like, because Shayna was the only one that defended her, like, okay, do you think, like, if they if they ask Shayna, like, oh, well, what if you had to wrestle her? Would you do what she wanted? Would you put her over? Like, how do you think that would work out? 
Yeah, you know, I I think back to I think there was a moment where I think Sonia Deville laughed at something about Ronda Rousey, and apparently she took exception to that, like, "Oh, who are you to criticize me or this and that?" Just because Sonia Deville, for those of you who don't know, does also have an MMA background, but you know, again, it goes back to what we said before. She the second when someone decides to say, "Hey, you know what." This thing that you do here, maybe not the best in the world. She takes exception to that. Like, no, you're supposed to praise her all the time. Everything she does is correct. She she can't she can't be flawed. Which is, yeah. I think, what's most frustrating, if you ask me. I agree. Same. Well, it's been a very touchy subject, but do you guys have anything else that you would like to get off your chest? Yeah. No, I'm good. I'm I'm good. I, mean, I I think that this is more than enough. Like, I don't want to say shine that we've given her, but like, I, I think that this is enough attention that she deserves at this point. Because honestly, you're taking something that a lot of people in this world like and just spitting on it, and it's like, okay, well, we don't need you to come back. If you're that bitter, you have money, you have everything you want. Go have your family. Yeah, we don't need you. <laughs> bye bye. I'm gonna wrap it up with one thing that I saw recently. Um, Kamish, I know you saw this. Dan, have you had a chance to watch the Ruthless Aggression uh, series on the network? No. Okay. Um, there is an episode specifically dedicated to Brock Lesnar on his first run. And Bruce Pritchard comes out with the fact and says, you know, Brock, when he became champion, didn't realize how much, you know, traveling had to be done, how much of a scheduling had to be done. And Brock tried, you know, to stay in there and to, you know, to, you know, he tried to hang, he tried to hang with that schedule. Um, But then he finally came to a point where he realized, you know what, I can't do this. This is not for me. And like a man, and this for this I respect Brock, like a man, he went to Bruce and said, I'm your champion, but I want out. I can't handle this. Do with me whatever you will, but I want out. And I think about that and I'm like, you know what, props to the guy. Not only is it being honest about, hey, you know what, this is not for me, but also he's saying, do whatever you want, put me in whatever story you want. And that's what led to the Goldberg match at WrestleMania 20. So what I'm trying to say is, you know, there are people whom Brock at that time had only been in the business for two years. Even he understood, you know what, if it's not for me, I need to get out. I need to, you know, do something else, whether it was football or, you know, wink, wink, UFC. Um, You know, Brock did what Brock needed to do. Um, So... To Ronda Rousey, I'd say, take a few notes. You know, if it's not what you wanted to do, you don't have to stay. There you go, guys. Uh, Let us know what you guys think in the comment section below. Um, Do you agree with us? Do you disagree with us? Do you think that what Ronda wrote, you know, um, was necessary? Was it not necessary? Um, Do Do you have your own nickname for Ronda Rousey? So, there you go, guys. Another episode done and dusted. On behalf of Dan the Man, the Commission, myself, once again, we hope that everybody is staying home and staying safe, and we will see you all next time.